Hello and welcome to SSW TV. My name is Andreas Lenkik and I'm joined today by JK. Uh, he is a solution architect here at SSW and he's here to show us how to get the most out of our logging in .NET Core. JK, how are you doing? Hi, great. That's fantastic. I'm so glad you're here on the show today. Now, you're a bit of an expert in logging in .NET. You've made a couple of blogs about it um, recently and over the past few years. Can you tell us, though, what is the real benefit of logging and why should we be doing it so prodigiously? Yeah, that's an interesting question because until something doesn't go terribly wrong, you're like, why do I need to spend time on logging? Uh, but yeah, as I alluded, is when something goes wrong, you need to figure out what went wrong. And if you don't have logs, uh, or the logs are too verbose to, for you to figure out what's going on, um, the likelihood of finding the bug not only uh, lessens, you may actually spend hours debugging something that could take you just two minutes looking at a log and saying, oh, it cannot find this thing. So I yeah. need to check the database, for instance, if it's missing. That's right. And I feel like some people don't really get the full power of logging. Um, it can do so much more for us if you have everything in the right spot. Um, have you ever, can you remember a scenario where you wish you've had more logging or uh, a real project that you've worked on where you've thought, okay, I really got to um, add more? Well, not on the projects I worked from the start, but this. <laughs> There's a lot of projects that I uh, had to join uh, in the middle or at the end and something went wrong and I'm like, okay, how do you figure out what happened? And it's like, uh, I don't know, you go to the database, you know roughly on which URL it failed and try to replicate somehow. It's like, mm. but that takes an hour. Um, and then just adding a few strategic logs uh, reduce the, the time from one hour to five minutes. So yeah. yeah, I had a lot of those problems and usually I locks are one of the higher priorities when I join up to uh, solve. Could you talk a little bit about how we can set up logs in our applications? What kind of options we have? Ah, yes. So setting up a locks is very interesting because not only Say so if you target ISP.NET Core, uh, it's a little bit different than uh, in console applications. It required some uh, battle scars before figuring out how to do it right. For instance, I'm currently showing you my blog post uh, where I'm yep. showing for ISP.NET Core 5. Now, I won't go into detail for all of that. This gives you a lot of recommendations of how to set up your projects. Um, I'm recommending Serilog for now uh, for using um, logging. So, so Serilog is a third party application. Yes. It's open source. People can pull it in to their .NET apps. Correct. Uh, so here are some NuGet packages that I recommend, how you configure your project uh, and applications. But for instance, some, uh, most of the people would just give you this part over here, right? This is how you add your serial log and it's integrated. But I'm like, well, what if your application fails to boot? What happens then? Now, some will just say, well, you just make a log, right? But if you have enough battle scars, it's like, what if, if it fails before you can actually initialize the logger? Like, what if you made a mistake with, say, in app settings, um, and then it doesn't even get to initialize the logger? And this is what I do. Uh, this is uh, working on Azure Web Apps. Uh, it basically figures, do I have a logger initialized? And if not, uh, try to make a console logger, which is guaranteed to be uh, available. And the Azure uh, web app actually can listen to the console uh, writes. So when I log this, uh, it will work. But for instance, if the logger has been initialized uh, and one of the syncs, uh, and I'll go to back uh, to see what syncs are, is for instance, application insight it's going to send it to the application insights rather than in the web app uh, console. So it gives you some information why the application uh, critically failed. 
So is Serilog the only option we have for logging? Like what other options do we have uh, on the .NET Core framework? So on .NET Core, .NET uh, framework, as well as .NET 5 and onwards, you have the option of using Microsoft Logger. And generally, I've recommended to use Serilog. But looking now on Microsoft Logger after so many years of development, I'm basically like, um, if your uh, logging strategy is that you just want to push it to application insights and maybe on your local machine, there's a uh, system called uh, Seek, like S-E-Q, um, yes. which basically allows you to um, gather all of the logs locally. Um, then you can just use the Microsoft built, uh, Microsoft official logger uh, that is already built in. Uh, that is highly recommended. If you need more complicated scenarios, like you want to push it into application insight, you want to push it to some other stuff, th those are called syncs. You're just trying to push uh, data all, all, all over the place. Then Serilog may be uh, something you want to look into. Um, but either case, uh, you still want to use the Microsoft Abstract Logger, which is what you uh, now get nowadays get for free uh, while using ISP.NET Core and console applications Azure functions. Um, use their interface rather than the Serilog one uh, because that allows you to use either Serilog, you can use the official one, or you can actually, it's done uh, in the future, use something else. So I can see that in your blog post here, it shows a lot of info about setting up in .NET Core. Mm -hmm. um, but at the beginning, you talked about having those really crucial logs that helps you get to the source of the solution. Mm. Um, how could you take your logs further? Like, like, where would you put them? Do you have an example of that? Uh, so one of the example, uh, I don't have right now the example right here, but what I would do is you can install application inside to your application. Uh, so and you just need to set up the telemetry uh, key, if I'm, instrumentation key, sorry. Uh, and then when you publish it to the web apps, it kind of automatically works when you use the uh, built-in uh, Microsoft Logger. When you use, for instance, Serilog, you need to massage a little bit the, the integration. In some of the versions, doesn't quite work well, which is why I kind of re recommend that if you just use application insight integration, maybe just go with the um, Microsoft Logger. Are there options about uh, logging, for example, your EF core information, yes. stuff like that? Yeah. Oh, and before I forget, there's also a uh, blog post if you're interested on how to set it up uh, console uh, applications. Here, I actually go through all of the scenarios that it might fail uh, if. Um, and oh, all right. Get. So it's actually you, you've set it up on each level before you get to the full featured solution. Yeah, so basically I'm telling you, hey, this looks all right, except you're getting this exception uh, when you're trying to run this. So this basically shows you not only the full solution, but it tells you how I got to this solution and why, um, you know, this is quite a lot of code, for instance, to set this up, um, but it shows you why there's so much code to set it up. That's good. You can see you're talking about battle scars. These are really, you've, yes. you've laid down your battle scars here one by one. Yes. So I won't go into details. If you're interested, have a read. If you're not, just copy the last code. And it has been tested. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you mentioned, for instance, e, uh, uh, EF Core, which for anyone who doesn't know, it's basically a Microsoft library to connect to SQL Server, to SQLite, and all the other types of databases and be able to do queries against them. And what I'm really um, about is not just be able to know that something happened, you also want to know um, the context around what happened. Um, otherwise, if you don't, say you have a query and you only know, for instance, yeah, this query over here happened, like select a tweet, but you don't know, for instance, where that happened. You cannot match uh, the business logic with the query. 
Now, what EF Core, for instance, uh, allows you to do is it allows you to add tag width. And you can add a, a string of your choice. And what happens is when you make a query to the database, it will actually attach this comment inside the SQL query. That means that when you do a SQL profiler, you can actually see uh, from where those queries are coming. You don't actually need to uh, you go to a say, application inside to figure out um, from where those SQL queries are coming from. Right, so this lets you get the context straight inside the log from the EF core or from your database, um, kind of right next to itself. Yeah, and on top of that, like this is only geared toward the databases in EF Core, right? What happens if you have something else? Um, then you can use something like lock scopes, um, which basically what allows you to do is, in this case, I'm just um, putting a scope around um, a uh, line of code that is happened to be EF Core. Uh, but if you look at this, I have a scope with the property EF queries and the property value is get tweets. And when you look at the logs, you can see that we have an additional line uh, of code. So this is currently seek, which is really great for local debugging. If, uh, if you use application insights, you would have it on the right side as an additional property. Uh, but a bad example, for instance, is here I have a method, insert um, tweet, and for instance, sa safe changes does not allow you to add uh, any with tags, uh, so you cannot um, add additional context. But when you look into logs, you still get that additional context, as well as if you have a method, say so here I have uh, some execution, uh, a, seek, a raw SQL. It could be any kind of locking uh, for begin uh, scope, not just you know EF core and stuff like that. It could even be .NET core logging or your own logging. It will have this additional information in it. So for instance, um, say that you're managing notes uh, and you want to say, okay, all of the impressions in this, or in this case tweets, all the impressions in this scope inside, I want to have the tweet ID. So when I look the logs, I can see, ah, okay, all of these logs are against this tweet ID. So if something went wrong, I can go into the database and check uh, if there's something wrong with that particular tweet. It, it seems like uh, there's so many places you can like kind of use these logs. And I'm hoping that our diligent viewer is thinking of all these great places they can add their logs in. But now that they have all these logs coming in, uh, should I be worried about performance, about storing all these logs and how to access them all? Generally not. But if you're really worried about like you have millions and millions of logs going in uh, per second or per minute, you know, there is ways of dealing with it. So Microsoft has released a high performance logging uh, instructions uh, where what they uh, tell you about is, hey, you can actually pre-compile uh, your uh, logs. So, so here you have logger message dot define. You can define the level of criticality and all of that stuff, even parameters for your log so that uh, what you get at the end is a pre-compiled message that is about four times faster than just calling it right away. And this should give you a nice boost to your performance in case uh, your locks would be uh, a performance bottleneck. There is one case that could be a bit more tricky is if you log into a synchronous uh, logger, uh, for instance, console. Uh, that can be a problem because what happens is the default Microsoft implementation of console logger as well as Serilog, but there's a work uh, behind in that that I specified in the uh, blog post. What happens when you do console logging is it actually waits for that line to be printed out. Now, if you have a million logs, 
it means that it has to wait for all million uh, locks to finish. Um, and it can actually block your execution or uh, execution of your code because every single time you write, it actually right. waits for it to finish. So, so there's some kind of pros and cons and there's some things you got to watch out for. Yes, but generally speaking okay. in production, you do not have, either you don't have the console lock or that console lock uh, writes into something else that is non-blocking. Well, that sounds like a great place to kind of take your logs to the end level, really max it out when you're worried about performance. I think this has been a really good review of the benefits of logging, you know, how to set up Serilog, um, some great resources about that for .NET Core, um, what happens when your logging fail, you've got a great blog post there as well, uh, and some look into how to upgrade your logs with EF Core query tags uh, and high performance logging. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add there, Jacob? Uh, maybe just um, a little uh, thing that I uh, found recently is open telemetry, uh, which is going to be very useful if you're interested in overall health and performance of your application. You can imagine that locks tells you what happened, uh, you know, line by line, where telemetry can give you more overall feel like this query took this long and you connect it to this uh, dependency of this law, uh, long and things like that. It gives you more like an overall feel for your application. So this is something that is going to be very interesting because previously you had to install the application inside SDK directly and you're directly dependent on it. And open telemetry might solve that in the same way the Microsoft Logger abstracts uh, all of the logging the open telemetry is going to abstract all of the telemetry. So I'm quite excited to uh, get started with this. Yeah, me too. I'm excited to see how that goes uh, continuing forward. I think you've shown us a really interesting look into the world of logging and .NET Core. Um, is there any place people can find you, any events coming up? Ooh, yeah, I think we have on ssw.com.au, we have our people, so you can find me here as JK. Uh, usually I have a schedule over here. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter. I usually tweet where I present, LinkedIn, and my uh, blog post also has a link to, the uh, to all of the events I go. Perfect, well, thanks so much for coming on. It's been a pleasure having you, JK, and I'll see you all next time. Thank you for having me. See you next time.